Tarzan of the Apes, brought to you from out the pages of Edgar Rice Burroughs' gripping book. Yes, Professor. These preparations are being made for us. Right, Donald? That is what it looks like. I have no fear of death. But I have a rooted objection to... You mean being made a meal of Archimedes for us, or I? Uh, that, that, Philander, I, I meant no such thing. Uh, I have a violent scruple against being used in any of their pagan rites. Uh, a rather a fine distinction, Professor. However, while I'm not afraid of death, I have all the Englishman's objections to going out without putting up a darn good scrap. But yes, Monsieur Platon is right. Even if we have to die, won't them be put it to die? No thing. But as Monsieur says, let it be with the back to the wall. No. And it would appear that all that remains to be decided upon is the manner in which we'll attempt our escape. And, we, and it is my belief that the ceremony will not take place till night. And that is still a few hours to start. Do you know, come over here. Look out into the compound. Why? The place is almost deserted. But the guards about our prison are still here. Yes, and to make a dash for it in the daylight is impossible. A poisoned arrow, a spear thrust. No, no. A few hours more and the chances of escape are multiplied a thousand times. You're quite right, Donald. By Jove, what wouldn't I give to have a right? Buona. Buona. Daro, buona. Hush, Clayton, hush. Uh, Daro, uh, I'm sure I heard someone speak your name. Daro, buona. Quiet. It is someone. Kimala. Who is it? It's Nakido. Nakido, wait that. Nakido, no forget time. The rope on the same life. Me, Pablo, is it possible? Nakido, go now. By and by, come back. Long spear, he watch close. By and by, one time, come again, lay ground. Talk small. We, oui, Nakido, come back. By and by. Quick, Dano. What is it? A possible hope, Dano? Yes, it is Nakido, a black. A skilled laborer in the ivory. I won't save him from a drunk on plantation owner. But what did he say? I could gather very little. He says he has not forgotten. Then he says the guard is watching and that he will return later. Do you suppose he knows where the rifles are stored? Probably, monsieur. Every black in the crowd knows that. Then why not get him to smuggle one or even two in here to us? But won't they be guarded? Probably so, but so are we. And yet we're discussing possibilities of escape. I think, in fact, I, I'm sure that I can see all the other huts from here. And ours, I would say, is the only one guarded. That being the case, I second Monsieur Platon's proposal. My idea was, get one or two rifles, find out in which hut the rest are stored, then, under cover of the two, make for the hut, seize the rifles, and start from there. As perfect a plan, mes army, as one could devise. Then nothing more can be done until Darno's friend comes back. And that, if he is wise, will not be till nightfall. Meanwhile, back in the rude cabin built by Lord Greystoke so many years ago, Jane Porter leaps back from the door as it opens and the black warriors file inside. Jane runs behind the table. She reaches out for the revolver, then remembers the cartridges are lying there on the table. The weapon is empty. Her next thought is to call for help, but that will only bring white skin into the same danger. The big warrior who had entered first goes behind the table and seizes her. He picks her up, carries her from the hut. The rest of the blacks follow. They go a short distance into the brush. There, in a small opening, they have dug a pit. Jane wonders what they will do. One of the blacks binds her hands, another ties her feet. They pick her up, carry her to the edge of the pit, slide her over the edge. Jane rolls to the bottom, lies still, face downward. The blacks disappear into the brush. Jane tries to struggle onto her back. Into her mind flashes a reason for this attack. It's a trap! Again, Jane struggles to turn over so she can see. If only she can warn white skin. For a moment, she lies motionless, staring straight above her. She's almost numb with pain. Trees, foliage, everything dances dizzily before her eyes. And then she stares harder. Can it be that she sees white skin up there in the trees? Yes, it is white skin! The ape man stares down into the pit. Jane opens her mouth to shout a warning. Tarzan fears she may be killed by the blacks if she shouts. He motions out of silence to lie still. Then he raises his head.
Tarzan's powerful throat comes his demand for help. And from the jungle comes the answering call of Tarzan's friend, the trumpeting of Tantor the elephant. In the cannibal kraal, Professor Porter Clayton and Philander and Tarno anxiously await the return of the friendly black Nakito. In such a little while, monsieur, dans une demi-heure, it will be dark. Also in a little while. We will be free, or at least on our way. You know, I'm really quite excited with the prospect of what Clayton calls this darn good scrap. Yes, yeah, yes. And much as I am a lover of peace, I too feel that I will be quite able to give a good account of myself. Shh. I thought I heard that. Warner. Warner. Me, Nakido. Warner. Take quick. Rifle. I too. He had some sense to do that. Quick, Professor. Draw the rifle through into the hut. Warner. One time, come again by my rifle. Encore another rifle. Bien fait, Nakido. Good. Ask him which hut, Dano. Nakido, which hut are rifles inside? One, two, three, four, seaside. Nay, I do not know I'm so turned around. Which side, seaside, Nakido? All the same, son, he die side. West. Nakido, go now. Too much noise. Bye bye. All kill. By Jove, what luck. Both magazines full. Now, we wait till dark. Yes. Less than half an hour. Crashing, smashing his way with a speed almost unbelievable for his huge bulk, Tantor the elephant breaks through the tangled mass of scrub and brush. Tantor thunders on. Every few yards he raises his trunk and calls out to Tarzan. Tarzan, high in the trees, answers. The blacks hear the call. Some would like to run, but determination to get the white devil guard holds them. Tantor is almost at the pit. Tarzan drops hand over hand. Yes, the elite rustles and his bronze body is almost unseen in the gathering dusk. With a soft pad, the ape man falls on Tantor's broad back. He bends down and speaks into the massive brute's ear. Abito, Tantor. Poliso, Bandara, Bormangani, Tantor, Tantor in the sand. He charges toward the pit. One of the blacks hidden in the brushes in Tantor's path. Tantor whips his trunk about him, raises the flaming hand, and turns him against the trees. Another and another he climbs forward. Some are caught beneath the beast's mighty feet, but Tantor plunges forward, tearing up thrust, slash anything that bars his way. Now he's at the edge of the pit. Tarzan slides down Tantor's sinuous trunk. He holds on with one hand and with the other takes hold of Jane. Who can on, Tantor? Tantor raises his trunk, swings Jane and Tarzan to his broad, flat head. Jane, Jane. Oh, White Skin, I was sure we would be killed. Killed? White Skin, come back quick. Kill Roman Gany. Yes, White Skin. I'm almost sorry that I asked you not to kill those blacks before. Tantor, can who me? Tarzan leans forward and tells Tantor to take them back to the platform in the trees. I wonder... I wonder if it was the black eyed thing that would have brought these others with him. If that revolver had been loaded, I, I would have killed myself. Jane, kill myself? Yes, I kill. If the gun had been loaded. Oh, but what's the use of my talking that way? You don't understand. But it is good to know that you are here to look after me again. Jane, frightened? Yes, White Skin. Jane, frightened. White Skin, kill many, Coleman Ganny. Jane, frightened. White Skin, kill, kill, kill many, many, Coleman Ganny. Kill many, man. And as Tantor carries Jean and Tarzan back to the bower in the trees, the tropic sun dips quickly into the sea. The shadows cast by the tall trees lengthen and turn from bluish purple to inky black. Rustling grasses on all sides tell of beasts of prey stalking their skin. In the cannibal kraal, Porter, Philander, Clayton, and Darno watch the sun set with quickly beating hearts. Well, I think it is the moment. My men are in the next hut. I will whisper to them as we pass. Ready, Professor Philander? I the am. Moment, the moment, a word. Now you, Professor and Philander, must go in front. Darno and I will cover you with the two rifles. Come. Nothing is moving. As quietly as possible. Quick, straight go. The ship has seen us. No! 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 No!